Please be seated. Can I ask the mission of the council to allow the palantipers to display the proceedings at the meeting on the two large screens in the chamber? Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay. declarations of interest, can I remind members that you are going to be required to declare meeting to any disclosable pecuniary or prejudicial interests, in which case the member will need to leave the chamber for consideration of that item. Are there any such declarations, please? Well, can I ask if the minutes of the extraordinary City Council meeting held on 8th of April 2015 and the City Council meeting held on 8th of April 2015 are agreed? <laughs> Could I, could I make it a <laughs> Can I extend a warm welcome to all our new councillors and to those members who have been re-elected for the further term? Congratulations to you all. Well done. You've all worked very hard, and welcome to the local city council. Thank you. Change uh, its course of direction. 
indeed for some of the poorest uh, within this city and some of the most disadvantaged, things are undoubtedly heavy for uh, a waste period of time for them. I think unprecedented really in the history of our city. In talking to the group last night, I uh, reflected on my times as a young lad, uh, similar to yours, Tony, uh, brought up um, in uh, poverty within the city centre and relying so much so on uh, services provided by the state and by the council. Unfortunately, that is not going to be the case for many people in, in this city. And as I said, indeed, things will actually get worse if we look at uh, the proposed uh, housing changes um, and the government's uh, stance in terms of allowing uh, the people that live in uh, RSL, social landlord housing, to buy those properties. That's going to have a huge detrimental impact on their ability to build more houses. And that means that the city will have to look at what it does uh, in terms of supporting those providers or even looking at ourselves, how we engage with other partners to build more accommodation for them. Um, the city, as you know, has no council house um, on its books, but we need to address the real problems that people within our city face. There are, for instance, people who are in receipt of um, housing benefits. A young people, um, Peter Mitchell, who uh, is here, talked about this last night and the challenges that uh, they will face as their benefits are taken away from them because they are under the age of 21. But where do they go? Who's going to accommodate them? Who's going to look after them? And of course we've got the bedroom tax and the problems that that causes. And then we've got the massive uh, adult social care funding reductions uh, to come. And I speak about this on a regular basis and make no apologies for saying it again, how we've gone from £224 million in 2010 down to £172 million now. And we've got to get that figure down to £132 million within the next two years. And we made the decision uh, the other day to actually uh, increase the fees that we pay to the private providers of uh, accommodation for people in the city, <coughs> criticised and called in by the Greens, of course, and the naivety uh, is beyond belief because they're actually talking about you know, the living wage. This party over here introduced the living wage in this council and want to see everybody spend it, but we simply haven't got that money. So my challenge to you, Councillor Coyne, is that every opportunity you raise, problem, 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 not really much different. What, what my challenge to you will be is to explain where that funding and that money is going to come from within the council. And of course, you know, we've seen, by the way, in the uh, local elections, the green surge become a green splurge. As the Labour Party in, uh, in Liverpool took just under 66% of the vote, um, stopping the green surge and reducing the Liberals and the Liberal Democrats to double acts uh, within the council. And we're hugely humble by the support of the people of this city, hugely humble. But I know, I know in my heart that they actually believe the, the issues that we're tackling on their behalf and the way they do it. Unfortunately, no, Councillor John McCall speaking, you have to wait until you become mayor in order to give that particular opportunity. But for me, you know, I say this, I know that we have the next two years to change the way we do things. That's why in the cabinet restructure, um, Jane Corbett takes over how we bring in partners within our city under the social inclusion and equality agenda. How we bring in partners across the city in the voluntary sector, in the faith sectors, 
and all the sectors, including the private sector, to tackle the inequality and unfairness that will be dealt to us and therefore dealt to the people of the city. And that's the challenge that we face. It's not something that I relish and it's not something I look forward to. But one thing I do know, Lord Mayor, I really do know, is that the Labour group is on its own when it comes to dealing with those issues that face us. I hope, I hope that there is an acceptance by the political parties and including now that Council of Kemp is no longer tied to any coalitions things nationally, that they engage in a constructive and positive way in actually helping us solve and deal with the problems of this city and the people of this city in terms of what they face. So for me, our changes in Cabinet reflect that, the way we will set about trying to mitigate the damages because like most everybody in this city, we hope that there wouldn't be a return of a Conservative government. And we certainly, if we believe that we were going to get one, hope that it wouldn't be with a majority to able to carry out some of those things because there will be no, um, no restrictions on what they're able to do. But make no mistake about it, you know, people criticised me um, after the election for saying that our city faces uh, a serious, serious few years ahead of it. We do. We really do. For other days and for other times, uh, we will talk about the success that our city is having in terms of growth and the economy and how it's creating jobs. That is undoubtedly true as we see the figures for ourselves. And that is despite the Tory government that we've been able to do those things. And we'll continue to do more of the same. So congratulations to the Labour Party here in the City of Liverpool, to the team for working so hard to keep that relationship and that contact uh, with the people of this city because it was them that returned us to office with an even bigger majority than we had the year before and the year before that. So we will not let them down. We will do everything we can to stand shoulder to shoulder with them to try to protect as much as we can. And that includes doing things differently and working, as I said, with our partners to make a real difference to the people. So uh, the notes and the changes that we've made, I believe, are in the best interest of the city, and that's why I've made them. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Anderson. Item 7, Constitution. Excuse me, Norma, do I get a right of reply having been named? No. Can we move on to item 7? Councillor Alan Dean. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Councillor Collins are here to respond. Uh, before I go on to this, Lord Mayor, can I offer my congratulations as well as uh, to your succession to the Lord Mayor's Shoes the Fox, along with that. On item 7 of Constitutional Issues 2015 16, can I move the recommendation set out in the report be submitted, be approved, in respect of A, responsibility of functions for 2015 16, and it's given delegation for the same period. B, review the uh, proportional standing orders 2015-16 and financial regs for the same period. And C, contract standing orders for 2015-16. Is that agreed? Yeah. 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 Regarding executive functions, and I, you know, as a as a Christian, I'm, a, I'm kind of 
moved by the Holy Spirit sometimes, and funnily enough, sometimes it's by, by jokes, and for some reason, an old joke came into my head when I, when I read this, and it was a, of the man standing in the, in, the, in the shop front with a dog, and a pedestrian walks past and says, um, is your dog biting? And the man says, no. And the man bends down, and the dog takes two of his fingers off, and the man says, I thought your dog didn't bite. And the man said, that's not my dog. <laughs> Now that's what I think this is, this is that we're missing. This is something which ostensibly doesn't look like it could bite. But it has the potential to rip the very heart out of the democratic... Councillor Cummins, I mean, you were going to ask a question. This is a statement, really. The question is, I, I, I would like to know who, how many members were aware that the DCLG were consulting on powers of this magnitude which would move effectively... If, Councillor uh, Cummins, could you just sit down? I'm going to get the Chief exec Executive to respond. Well, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just not to cut across Councillor Cummins, but the simplest answer to the question. <coughs> Sorry, Chamber. Is that better? Yes. Thank you. Not to cut across uh, Councillor Cummins' question, but in the interest of time scale and so on, I think the simplest answer to the point that you wish to put is that this is coming back to the next ordinary meeting of the Council. So all councillors are being given the opportunity to comment on the consultation from CLG that you're referring to, and nothing will happen on it until it comes back to the City Council. Thank you, Chief Executive. So the consultation... Hey, Councillor Cummins, you've had this response now, but you please sit down. Right. Councillor Cummins, you'll have a further opportunity at the next full council, as the Chief Ex Executive has just explained, so we're going to move on now. So, is that agreed? Councillor Dean. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, well, so before you start, can I just say that can we take uh, agenda items eight and nine, all support and reports relating to these items, be taken together? Is that agreed? Thank you, Lord Mayor. That's something of a way you want to do that. You've obviously got to take it more, can I move? I'm going to move this as I've got them. We just add the three together if that's okay, because this is the way I was given it. Can I move the appointments of seven select committees for the municipal year 2015-16 that's set out in Appendix 2 to this note and that the terms of reference for select committees be circulated for reference to group leaders and submitted for the first meeting of each committee be approved? I'm assuming you want to go to the next one. Political proportions. Can I move that one, the political proportions of the committees and the allocation of seats it sets out the this state and it's not be approved. The proposed appointment of chairs of committees is circulated to be approved. The deputy chairs of the committee is to be appointed at the first meeting of each committee and reported to the next meeting of City Council. <coughs> or for the seats not allocated to members, the names be proposed to the committee member services or alternates designated for groups be reported to the chief executive in writing and will have a meeting to effect once they're submitted. And can I just add to that there was a vacancy identified on planning that will be taken by Council Woodhouse. Thank you. There's an amendment received from Council Steve Lapford. Um, my Attached, Lord Mayor. Attaches Appendix 3 to this note. Is um, the amendment seconded? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't want to make a great debate of it. Um, last year, the Liberal Party group. Um, did participate in the Budget Working Party and are involved in constructive debate. I regret Councillor Anderson suggesting only the Labour group will be able to look at the problem of the city constructively. However, one of the differences of opinion we have genuinely is on the Regeneration Committee. It has had some incredibly large agendas and, going to be honest, dealing with all the issues of regeneration, um, some of the big infrastructure projects, and not having a separate housing committee, I think has missed us ability to look at some of the details that would be helpful. When we move the amendment that there see a separate housing committee at the last council, uh, Mayor Anderson said um, that housing was going to be dealt with at the mayoral scrutiny committee because it was such a key uh, mayoral objective. And I understand that point of view, even I didn't accept it. Well, we don't have a mayoral subcommittee. Uh, we don't have a mayoral scrutiny committee this year. But we will have a regeneration committee. We have a regeneration cabinet member and a housing cabinet member. And I just think it makes total sense to have 
a committee for those big portfolios. So that <coughs> often some of the problems in the city have arisen because of often minor issues over how a policy is interpreted in a locality rather than the bigger structures. So I, I, I wish to move and we wish to re-establish the Housing Committee. I think it's totally coherent to what the Mayor said last year and it's totally coherent to the size of the agendas that the, the combined committees had to deal with. I think it would give people greater focus and it would reflect the Cabinet structure as well. And in light of the uh, Merrill Street Committee won't be there to, to deal with this, um, I think that even compounds the issue why it should be needed and why it would be appropriate. Well, Mayor, can we just move straight up as this is that amendment? Okay. Are there any other speakers? No. No. Can we move to the vote, please? All those in favour of the amendment? All those against? Is there any abstentions? Yeah. Voting for the amendment 2, against 80, no abstentions, the amendment falls. Before we go on to the, the main uh, motion, can I just remind members that as indicated in the report of the supplementary agenda, in order to suspend proportionality for the committees listed out, all members present must vote in favour with no dissenting voices. This being to comply with the requirements of Section 17, Stroke 1, the Local Government and Housing Act, 1989. If there are any members dissenting, then proportionality rules are applied to those committees. Is the recommendation in relation to political proportions and allocations of seats agreed? Councillor Dean again. <laughs> that one went through. <coughs> Item 10, scheme of members' allowances to Lord Mayor for 2015 16. Can I move that one, it be noted that this is the sixth successive year that there's been no uplift in the basic allowance payment to members. Two, in respect of childcare and dependent allowance provision, that this is to be approved in principle with the payment being determined to reflect the hourly rate of pay. In, current, in line with the current living wage level and the recommendation to submit it to the next ordinary council meeting in July followed a brief review of the period where it would constitute the relevant approved duty for purposes of attracting additional payment entitlements and all members be requested to submit any additional views relating to the childcare and dependent provision during the course of the next meeting cycle and three subject to the above the revisions of the allowance scheme be approved Okay, uh, there's an amendment received from Councillor Stephen Bradford attached as Appendix 4 to this note. Is the amendment... <coughs> is the amendment seconded? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Bradford? Well, I think um, I'll make the points I shared at the Constitution Issues Committee. And I've now shared, I think, at least three times, if not four times, before the independent panel. When I look at the relative pay rates recognising responsibility in work, <coughs> it strikes me, I think, that relatively the amount of money to be paid for ward members for the comprehensive duties they want to take is undervalued. If we look at the pay rates for cabinet members, I think that is undervalued. So stick it significantly because the responsibilities and decision making they have to take. However, I think in comparison to those rates, the midpoint pick for committee chairman, and I can say that having done that, I think are actually excessive to the extra workload a chairman would take compared to that of the cabinet member or the members of that committee. Certainly, I have been disappointed 
by the lack of communication from not all, but the majority of mayoral leads uh, when they have actions in my own ward and in, the, in issues that you would have thought we would have been consulted upon. And I have not seen, to the largest degree, a significant accountability tracking back for mayoral leads. Therefore, I move the amendment in some ways out of frustration because representations to the independent panel haven't been taken on. And if we approve something that I think was not inherently fair and equitable to the level of work that I, I think it would be hypocritical. So I move this with a heavy heart. Can I just add one other comment? Um, we certainly did have a very constructive debate over uh, childcare facilities and suggested that, that we would support it being used where it was for formal duties of committee natures rather than um, ad hoc events, if I use that, the forms of committee meetings, that would, I think, would be protection from people being um, accused of their milking system. And I think there was a need, and I think in debate it was referred to that there, there is a, a real need to look at not just childcare, but other carers allowances as well, and how the members made the point. The last comment I'd make, Chair, I think the independent panel has the disadvantage, and I don't say that with any disrespect to the intention or the value of the members, that we don't have, um, as far as I know and not been aware of, and if I'm corrected I'll be actually pleased to hear it, I think we've got the disadvantage, I think there would be a real benefit of including some people who have served as senior councillors in different roles, who may no longer be councillors and perceived to have a vested interest, being on the panel and bring the experience from inside rather than just receiving the reports. And I think that would strengthen the panel's ability to arbitrate comparative rates. So I, I move the amendment with a, a degree of reluctance, but I just feel so frustrated that the views we've put in input have not been agreed and not been recognised and do so um, with you know, a degree of heavy heart. But I'd also ask maybe um, some of the good consideration we do have quite a few former councillors who served a lot of different roles, and I think one or two former councillors sitting on the panel would actually add value to the panel's ability to arbitrate some of those differentials. Okay, before I bring Councillor Dean, is there any further speakers? No, Councillor Dean. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Again, in straight opposition to this, this is something that the panel have looked at and have already given a commitment to the members that they will review all of the things the council relatives identified. We share some of the concerns and some of the issues that we've undertaken to, to review that fully during the next period and I'm confident that they'll come up with a solution or a recommendation that the council could probably adopt. So straight opposition again. Okay, can we go to the votes? All those in favour of the amendment? All those against? Any abstention? <laughs> Voting for the amendment six against seventy five, the amendment no abstentions, the uh, amendment is lost. Go to the substantial motive. All those in favour? That agreed? Schedule of dates uh, as in the appendices for 2015-16 and 16-17 be approved, and any subsequent proposed <coughs> changes to the schedule of dates for 2015-16 be considered by the Whips meeting following consultation with the relevant members. Is that agreed? Mm -hmm. well. In terms That's of appointments to members, I joint authorities, Lord Mayor, can I move fire authority, fire rescue service? Councils Peter Brennan, Roy Gladden, Dave Hanratty, Barbara Murray, James Roberts, and Sharon Sullivan. Two for Mercy Travelling Combined Authority, <coughs> Councils Dunn, Barrington, Mark Norris, Mary Rasmussen, Liam Robinson, <coughs> Pam Thomas, and Jeremy Wilson. For Merseyside Recycling and Waste Authority, yourself, Lord Mayor, 
councillors Laura Robertson Collins and Andrew Foxley and for the Police and Crime panel in accordance with the legislation, Council, uh, sorry, Mayor Anderson OBE be confirmed as an automatic appointment on the city uh, on behalf of the city and also appointed councillors Errol Owen and Emily Spurl. Is that agreed? <coughs> Councillor Dean. Appointed to the LGI General Assembly, the votes will be cast by Mayor Anderson OB, three votes, Councillors Anne O'Byrne, two votes, Councillor Wendy Simon, two votes, and Councillor Nick Small, two votes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can I move that the appointments of outside bodies be deferred for the next meeting of the City Council in view of the Cabinet's uh, member changes that have been uh, approved today by the Mayor and the current arrangement continue until otherwise agreed by Council? Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay. Combined authority, Lord Mayor, can I move that Mayor Anderson will be appointed as the City Council representative on the City Region with the, <coughs> the Council Anne O'Byrne, Deputy Mayor, as his alternate? And the Council Patrick Hurley be appointed to the Combined Authority Scrutiny Panel as both a member and the Authority seat, uh, Scrutiny Link. Uh, and the, the second name will come later, Lord Mayor. Is that agreed? Okay. Item 18, Councillor Dean. Lord Mayor, can I uh, recommend that the Overview and Scrutiny Select Committee Scrutiny Annual Report for 2014 15 is set out? In uh, pages 178 to 214, and the council agenda be approved. And can I just say, Lord Mayor, before that's approved, some criticism has been levelled at the authority over recent months about our level of scrutiny and our effective level of scrutiny. And um, particular comments have been made and referred to the decision to scrap the mayoral select and overview and scrutiny. We took the decision to do that purely and simply because those committees weren't doing what they were supposed to do. Overview and scrutiny was a, a committee that was now made uh, a briefing session with myself and the chairs of the select committees. If that's what we do, we review how the committees have operated. Anything that needs to be tinkered with or changed or improvements that can be made, it's not really a scrutiny committee, it's a review process. But in relation to the mayoral select committee, I was astounded to see the comments made by Councillor Kent in the media over that issue. We deliberately set that committee up on the Mayor Anderson's instruction so that he could be scrutinised. The first two years it was clear he wasn't being scrutinised properly. So he instructed me last year to change the constitution of that committee to make the opposition the lead groups. And the constitution of Mayor of Select last year was seven opposition and five Labour. They had every opportunity to hold the Mayor to task, to challenge him, to bring stuff forward to be discussed and considered and scrutinised. They failed miserably to do that. Yeah. He wants to be scrutinised, he's, he's not like everybody else. He relishes being scrutinised. He gave them the opportunity and said, here's a committee, you're in charge of it, you've got the votes, you scrutinise me. And Councillor Kemp's response was to attend the first three and not the last four. So the scrutiny was there, and to use the old Alice the old man, you can take a council to scrutiny, but you can't make them do it. And they choose, they chose to fail their electorate by not scrutinising the mayor properly. And if they choose not to do that, we're not going to have a committee where someone gets paid just to sit there going through the motions every six weeks. That's why we scrapped it. I move those things over. Okay. <coughs> a question, Councillor Redford, or a comment? Well, I, I, I could make a comment, but I'll have to make it into a question. When you say the opposition failed to scrutinise, can you consider why you believe the Liberal Group failed to scrutinise? Because you said the opposition in a plural sense. I take exception to that, because I remember us quite often asking questions. The fact we don't necessarily disagree with the conclusions doesn't mean there was a lack of scrutiny. And I think that comments are not appropriate to all the opposition parties, and I take exception to that. In respect, can I say a positive point, Chair, and I think it is useful, uh, my Lord Mayor, is I certainly do think the overview of the scrutiny committee has been very productive about processes and, and not adding value. And I, we, we, we would support the removal of that committee. I don't think it's added value over the years. And I say that not just this administration, previous administrations. In respect of the mayoral scrutiny committee, we might have been more critical of the fact that we've had a compensatory move by the group in the increasing opposition members on the, on the select committees. And I think that is a proportionate balance 
So I'm, I'm not trying to be critical, but certainly I don't think um, the comments certainly would be true of the Liberal group, and in fact, including um, the Budget Working Party as well. Council yeah. <coughs> Dean is quite happy to amend what I said, Lord Mayor. It was a generic uh, opposition. Well, it's quite clear that the opportunity is there for all opposition parties to scrutinise the activities and the roles that the Mayor carries out on this city's behalf. And that committee wasn't doing that, pure and simple. And that's why we decided to get rid of it. You know, we're, we're very keen to save money in the authority and keen to make sure that every opportunity is given to people to scrutinise select committee chairs, cabinet members, wherever. And indeed, the Mayor's already indicated that he will have a public question time in here three times a year in, pl in places uh, that they all are select. When all opposition parties can, can have half an hour to, to ask him questions about things he's done or hasn't done in the past, and I'm sure he adequately answers and responds to those comments. But the opportunity was there, it wasn't taken, and why should we have something, as members of this chamber are always saying to us, we've got committees that aren't doing anything. We recognise we gave the committee to the opposition, they didn't do the right thing with it, so we scrapped it. And I accept what Councillor Rutherford says, it may not always be in their issue, but there was an opportunity for members to bring things forward collectively to, to scrutinise them and they didn't do that. So we dropped it and that's why we've done it. I'm, I'm grateful for, for Councillor Rutherford's comments in, in relation to all union scrutiny because we were concerned about the reality of what, what was happening. It wasn't beneficial to, to the council's work. It certainly wasn't a select committee and that's why we've abolished it. And again, I thank him for the comments about the proportionality. We didn't have to do that. But if you remember, and I'll use his name correctly this time, the then Councillor Coyne was always saying to us, we don't get an opportunity to ask things, we don't get an opportunity to be involved. So I've given them the opportunity by putting two members of the opposition, minimum, on every select committee. And that is there for them to take up. We will be watching very, very carefully every select committee meeting, how that opportunity is taken up. But I do need to stress, Lord Mayor, that we've made the opportunity available. It was interesting again that one member of the committee when I raised it said, oh, well, we don't really want that. We should be out in the community working. He should have thought about that four years ago, and otherwise he wouldn't have just him and his wife as elected members on behalf of the Liberal Democrat Party. But we've given them the opportunity. They can now do things more constructively in opposition on every select committee. We've reduced our numbers so the, the numbers aren't overwhelming. We couldn't take it any lower than we have, but the opportunity is there for all opposition parties to take part fully and adequately in scrutiny. <coughs> Councillor Crum. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, in terms of the Mail Select Committee, we haven't actually been very critical of it, be, of it being scrapped. We're on record of saying that some of the committees, or maybe even all, should, should go because um, they're not, they haven't been that effective. And does Councillor Dean think that the um, Mail Committee might have been more effective if when members did submit questions on specific issues um, that they wanted to know answers, answers on from the Mayor? If they'd actually got straight answers rather than just being sort of batted back as if it um, wasn't a serious question, and that you know that could have been a, a factor that just motivated councillors uh, not to take part as much. Given that I, I uh, I'm a person from Scoot now, if you indulge with me, because it's a question that really, in fairness, councillor Dean uh, can't answer, but I can. I think probably if we look at the number of questions that were asked of Mayor and Select Committee. There may well probably have been somewhere around about 1,600 questions. I think 1,540 of them come from you about bus lanes. That is not effective scrutiny. That is child politics. The fact of the matter is, the reason why we have a, a mayoral select committee, the only mayoral select committee in the whole country set up by me for scrutiny, was to have proper scrutiny. The fact of the matter is because you don't get what you want doesn't mean to say that scrutiny is not working. The reality is all of the select committees are scrutiny. This council, this council under my leadership has had more scrutiny of its decisions than any other administration in the history of this council, including the Liberal Democrats. So it's a bit of an insult for you to turn around and say that we didn't get straight answers. You got straight answers. You might like them, but they're the answers because it's called the real will. Okay. 
Obviously, that is a, an interesting debate, and I'm sure we'll have more, <laughs> we'll have, we'll have more uh, discussions like that in the future. But can we agree that last? Uh, <laughs> the real world, yeah. Okay. Hi, <laughs> hey, thank you all for attending, and I hope that you all stay for the next Thank you.